Hello 8th graders, this video is for ELR 8.3, which is e PE and KE conversions. In this lesson you're going to learn how to find a missing variable when we only know one thing about an object, whether that be how high up it is or how fast it's moving. And we're going to use something called the Law of Conservation of Energy in order to do that. That's where we need to start. So this hopefully looks pretty familiar to you. The Law of Conservation of Energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. We've done the law of conservation of matter before, and a few others as well, and so hopefully it feels familiar. Basically it says that potential energy can turn into kinetic energy, and kinetic energy can turn into potential, and that's all fine, but the total energy always stays the same. So if you watch the little car on the track, when it goes up through the loop-de-loop, -loop, its potential and kinetic energies are bouncing back and forth, up and down, depending on how fast it's going and where it is in height but the total energy never changes. It's always got the same amount. Now, this is true when we're looking at made-up situations of a pretend roller coaster. In real life, this is true, this statement is true, whenever there's not friction. So friction is something that is going to take away from an object's energy, and eventually that's why things would come rolling to a stop. But we're going to talk later why that friction is still a type of energy, and it's not actually being destroyed. Now, for the types of questions that you're going to see on this ELR, we need to talk about some steps for how to approach them, because the steps are pretty necessary, otherwise it can feel pretty overwhelming. So the steps look like this. Our first job is to figure out the total energy of whatever object they're giving us at any spot. So we're just trying to figure out, well, how much are we working with? It may be in the form of potential or kinetic. We are, it may vary by question. But that's our first task. How much energy does the thing even have? So in this question, we've got a soccer ball that is 0.6 kilograms, and it was dropped from 8 meters, and we're supposed to figure out how much kinetic energy it had partway through its fall, right here at the 3 meter mark. Well, we know that all of the total energy for this ball has to be some number the whole way through. It might be in the form of potential, it might be in the form of kinetic, but the total has to be the same the whole time. Well, number two is, if we know the height, figure out its potential energy. And in some questions, maybe they'll give us the velocity, well, then we would start with the kinetic energy. In this one with the soccer ball, they're telling us the height to begin with. So we can find the potential energy up here at the beginning, and we know that every other spot along the way has to have that same total. So they gave us the height, that means that we're going to do mass of 0.6 times gravity of 10 times 8, and we can find the energy for the soccer ball is 48 joules. It's all in the form of potential up here, and they're going to drop it. So that means that some of it is going to start turning into kinetic. Well, down here at the next spot down, we have to figure out what we're going to be subtracting to figure out what turned into kinetic. So at this next spot, we know that the total still has to be 48. It's just going to be a combination of potential and kinetic put together. Well, since they gave us the height at this spot, we can figure out how much of the energy is still potential. Because we know the height, we know the mass, we can figure out the potential energy for this spot, too. We know it's going to be lower, because it's lower, it's lower amount of energy, because it's lower height. Whatever is left over has to have been the kinetic energy that it got turned into. So we're going to figure out the potential energy here at this spot. We're going to take its mass, 0 0.6, times gravity of 10, times this lower height of 3, and at this spot, it's still got 18 joules of potential energy. So it went from 48 down to 18. That means that we lost 30 joules somewhere along the way. And those 30 joules had to have turned into kinetic energy. Well, that's great to know because now we can plug that into our kinetic energy equation. So that's step 3. Subtract what you found from the total and find that missing energy. So at that 3 meter mark, 48 minus 18, it, still, it had 30 joules of kinetic energy at this spot. Now it's your turn to try one. I want you to use those same exact steps and try it for this basketball question. I've changed it a little bit so that I'm giving you the velocity of the basketball that's rolling toward a hill, and it starts to roll up the hill. Your job is to figure out how much potential energy did it have when it was slowed down to 1 meter per second. So it started at 4, and it started rolling up the hill, and it started slowing down. When you're ready to check your answer, start the video up again. 
you're still watching, you're ready to check. Now, if you didn't know where to start and you struggled with that, I want to encourage you to watch how I start and pause the video when you think you know what to do next, because the best practice is going to be you doing it on your own. So step number one is to calculate the energy that we know. It told us that it was going four meters per second here at the beginning, and we know it's mass. That'll let us use the kinetic energy equation and figure out how much total energy it has, because all of it is kinetic down here at the bottom of the hill. So we use one half times mass times velocity squared. Remember, do your squaring first. And at the end, we're gonna get 5.6 joules. That means that everywhere along the ramp, it has to have a total of 5.6 joules. Now, at the spot that they're asking us about, they're telling us at the one meter per second. That's how fast it's going at this mystery spot up here. Well, we still know the mass of the ball. And now we have this new velocity we can figure out what the kinetic energy is going to be at this mystery spot by using the same equation. So we plug it in, we do our squaring first, and we find out that it has 0.35 joules of kinetic energy at this spot up on the hill. Well, it looks like it lost quite a bit of energy. It went from 5.6 down to 0.35. When we subtract those, the leftovers must be what we lost must be what we lost to potential energy. So our answer is 5.25 joules got turned into potential. Now here's where this becomes really useful. If we are trying to find a missing variable in one of these equations, we can compare two points to each other in order to figure that out. Let me show you how. Let's say that we've got a roller coaster whose brakes are rated to stop this roller coaster safely as long as it never goes over 18 meters per second. So as long as it stays at that velocity or lower, we're safe. The designers of the roller coaster want the first hill to be 21 meters tall, and they're not sure if that's within the safety range or not. And they don't want to have to test it to find out. They want to know ahead of time. And that's our job. So we're going to use what we just figured out about comparing energies to answer their question, is this roller coaster safe? Here's how. We're going to use the exact same steps that we just used and we're adding one extra one that I'll show you in just a second. So step number one, we need to find this roller coaster's total energy at some spot. Since they told us the height of the hill, we can use that in our potential energy equation and figure out how much potential it has, and then we're gonna move on with that. So we're starting with our potential energy equation, mass times gravity times height. They told us it's a 500 kilogram coaster starting at 21 meters tall. So 500 times 10 times 21, this roller coaster is going to have 105,000 joules. Now remember, it's, it can't lose any. We're pretending there's no friction for the moment. That means that everywhere along the track, it has to have that same amount of energy. So we're going to compare that to the bottom of the track, where it's going all into kinetic. Well, since we know that the potential energy at the bottom is zero, all of that energy had to be turned into kinetic energy. So that means we can take that 105,000 and put it into the kinetic energy equation. So kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. When we plug in the 105 in place of Ke and we put in the mass in place of m, we have this v left over to solve for. And now we can do some algebra and solve. If you feel a little uncomfortable with a square, don't worry, I'm going to help you. First thing we need to do is do the multiplying that we can. We're going to do 1 half times 500. So we have 105,000 equals 250 V squared. Now let's get rid of this 250. Since it's 250 times V squared, we're going to divide by 250 to get rid of it. Move it out of the way. Now we have 420 equals V squared. The opposite of a square is a square root. So in order to get v by itself, we have to do the square root to both sides. So when we do the square root of 420, we're going to get 20.5. So we just found out how fast this thing is going to be going at the bottom of the hill. Remember, they said that the roller coaster cannot go over 18 meters per second and still have it be safe. That means that this roller coaster is going to be going much too fast. It'll be going over the limit, so not a safe roller coaster. It's now your turn to practice again with this new concept. 
on your paper, I need for you to find out three different things about this skater going off of a jump. The only information that I'm giving you is the fact that the skateboarder has 45 kilograms of mass and they're starting at 40 meters up on the top of the ramp. Your job is to figure out three things. I want to know how much kinetic energy will he have at the bottom of the hill. I need to know how fast is he going when he's at 15 meters. And I need to know how high up is he when he's going 25 meters per second, when that's his velocity. Use the steps that we showed you in the last part of this video and start the video again when you're ready to check. If you're still watching, you're ready to start checking your answers, let's tackle the first one. How much kinetic energy will he have at the bottom? Well, remember, whatever energy he has at the top has to be the total the whole time. Down at the bottom of the hill, he's at the bottom, so he's used up all of his potential energy. So whatever he had at the top has to be our answer. That's the kinetic at the bottom. So we're going to solve for his potential energy at the top. PE equals MGH. We plug in our numbers and we find out that it's 18,000 at the top. Therefore, he has to also have 18,000 at the bottom, just in the form of kinetic. The next question asks us to figure out how fast he's going at the 15 meter mark. In order to answer this question, we need to start with what we figured out in the last question. We know his total energy is going to be 18,000 the whole time. That means that we can figure out his part of his energy here and do some subtraction like we did earlier. They're telling us the height, so that means that we're going to use potential energy to figure out what that is at this point. So potential energy at 15 meters, the rest of it has to be kinetic. We're going to start with the potential energy equation, mass times gravity times height. We plug those things in for this second location, and we find out that his potential energy at this spot is 6,750. Well, that means that the rest of the energy must be kinetic. So we do some subtraction. His total was 18,000. We take away his potential at that one mystery spot. That means that his kinetic has to be 11,250. We're almost there. We can take that and plug it back into the kinetic energy equation to find our velocity. So we're going to do 1 half mass velocity squared. Just like before, we're going to do our multiplying and get these numbers out of there. So 1 half times 45, and then divide both sides by that answer, and then do our square root. And we will find out that the velocity has to be 22.36 at this location, 15 meters on the ramp. The last question is how high up is he when he's going 25 meters per second? In this one, we have to do a couple of steps again, but we have to start where we did last time. We know his total energy is 18,000 joules the whole time. This time they're giving us a velocity. That means that our next step is to go with the kinetic energy equation, since that one is the one with velocity. So we know that at some point he's going to be going 25 meters per second. Let's plug it into the kinetic energy equation and see how much energy that is. We plug in the numbers that we know. We make sure to do our squaring first and then multiply. And wherever he is when he's going 25 meters per second, that's 14,062.5 joules. Well, if he started with 18,000, and at some point this is how much he has in the form of kinetic, we know that the leftovers have to be potential. So we do our subtraction, and we find out that at that same point, wherever it is, he has a potential energy of nearly 4,000 joules. Just like before, now we can take that number and plug it into our potential energy equation in order to get to our height. So we go with that equation, we plug in the numbers that we know. We know his mass, we know gravity. Now we can solve for h. We're going to do 45 times 10, divide both sides by that number, and we're going to find that wherever, when he was going 25 meters per second, he was at a height of 8.75 meters, so somewhere right in here where my cursor is. The last thing for you to do are these independent practice questions on the last page. This is what you're going to take a picture of and turn in to Google Classroom. When you're ready to check your answers for this, they are stapled to the back wall of my classroom. Ready to go.